Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be getting a little bit more technical. This video will be part of a longer series on using Python for computational finance. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to be writing code, we're going to be using APIs, and we're going to be dealing with lots of data. My goal with the videos in this series is to provide you a base from which you can begin exploring the world of computational finance. Now, this is not an introduction to Python as a whole. There's plenty of resources out there to get you started. Instead, I'll be focusing only on things that help you get up and running with the IEX API. If you are completely new to Python, check out the description below for some resources that might be helpful in, in getting you going with Python. So why Python? Well, it's an accessible and easy to learn language, easier than most that is. And well, it just so happens to be the language that I use when connecting to the IEX API. There's a lot of support and tools available that make working with financial data much, much easier. In this video, we'll get set up with Python, we'll install a Python library that helps us connect to the IEX API, and then we'll take a look at what the IEX API has to offer. You should note that while the IEX API is free for a lot of things, it is quite limited. You can still do a bunch of different things, but if you are serious about computational finance, and if you want to continue on in this series of videos, you will need a premium account. So we're going to get started by installing Python using a tool called Anaconda. Anaconda is a freely available tool that installs Python and a bunch of scientific libraries that we won't need in this video, but that we will take advantage of in future videos. I only have access to a Mac for recording, but this process is highly similar no matter your platform. And of course, if you already have Python 3 installed and can get it up and running without issue, then you're in the clear. Feel free to skip ahead a bit. What we are looking at here is the Anaconda website, and the link for it is in the description below. You'll need the individual edition of Anaconda. Now, Anaconda is a Python installer that comes with a lot of extra pieces. While we don't need all those extra pieces to get started, they are good to have around for when things get more complicated. All we have to do is click download. The graphical installer is the easiest, and then we just run through the steps like we would when installing a regular program on the computer. Once it's done, congratulations, you now have Python installed on your machine and we can get started. If we open the Anaconda Navigator, we can see that there's a variety of ways to access Python and uh, there's a whole bunch of tools available. For this video, we're just going to use the simplest and most visually appealing way, which is Jupyter Notebook. The Jupyter Notebook is like a notebook, where you can write code, you can write text, and you can see everything all on one page. It's a neat tool, and it makes keeping track of what you've done quite simple. It's primarily used in data science to keep track and illustrate models that you are building. Before we start using the notebook though, we need a way to easily access the IEX API. To do that, we need a library. Libraries in Python are reusable chunks of code that you can use over and over again. So they end up saving you development time. This particular library is one that I've used quite a few times. So we'll give it a go here. A link is in the video description or you could just search IEX Finance Python on Google and you should get it as your top result. As you can see, we get a pip install command on the Python site. This command can be typed into your terminal or command prompt to install a library. Here, I'll open the terminal on my Mac, paste the command and it'll be installed in a couple of seconds. We'll also need an IEX account. For this, go to iexcloud.io and get yourself signed up. In today's video, we'll just be using a free account, but future videos will take advantage of paid features. I'd recommend playing around with the API a little, especially if you're brand new to Python and just seeing if you think it's something that you'll stick to before committing to a subscription. 
The sign up process is just the same as any site and you will need to confirm your email before you'll be given access to a piece of information that you'll need called a token. Once you've confirmed your information, the token will be on your main IEX console page. Grab that and let's head back to our notebook to start typing some things out. A quick note on tokens. Keep them private. The token you see here is for a non-paid account that I won't use. But if you're paying for an account, especially one on a service like IEX that charges per call, make sure you keep this thing private. All right, so here we are in our notebook and we can try some things out. First off, we're gonna type from iexfinance.stocks import stock. And what this does is it takes the library that we installed and it imports the chunk that we want. We want the stock chunk of that library. So let's type that. Now to run a line of code in the Jupyter Notebook, you hit shift and return or enter key. Hitting that, you'll see that we now get a little number in this square brackets right here, indicating that it has run successfully. If we were to run something uh, that had an error, you would see an error message pop up, but as we've got no error message, we can assume that that piece of code ra ran successfully and we can move on. Next up, we want to type our token or copy and paste our token. You don't want to type that big old string of characters. So we'll copy and paste our token from IEX and I'm going to assign it to a variable called token. So token equals, and we're gonna open a set of quotes to put that token in. Now that we've imported the library and we've added our token, we can go ahead and make our first call to the IEX API. So to do this, I'm gonna type stock with a capital S like we imported here above. I'm gonna open a set of parentheses and the first argument is going to be the stock ticker of of the company that we're looking to get information on. So I want to get Apple. The stock ticker is AAPL, so I'll open a set of quotes, AAPL, close those quotes off, and we're going to need to pass our token along as well. So for that, we just type token equals, and then whatever you ended up calling your token variable. For me, I call it token. So token equals token. If we hit shift and return on that, you'll see we get something back. It's got a pair of angle brackets, IEX finance dot stocks dot base dot stock, and then some hex code. This means nothing. What what is it? Well, let's try that again. But instead of just running the code, we'll assign the return to a variable. So I'll just call this S. S is equal to stock. Again, Apple token equals token. And let's go ahead and run that. You see now the S is the same thing with a slightly different hex code as we got above. So now we can use that S. We can use S dot get quote and get quote is something that the IEX API offers. And you'll see now that we get back all of this information. We have stuff like the change in price. We have the market cap. We have the 52 week high, the 52 week low. We even have the year-to-date change, and we can get any piece of information out of there that we want. Let's try get market cap out, for instance. So there you have it. We got Python set up. We got an IEX API account. We connected to the IEX API account with a library, and we successfully queried the IEX API. But this wouldn't be much of an introduction to the IEX API if all we did was get Apple's stock quote. So let's discuss a little bit more of what the IEX API can do and how much it'll cost you to do it. Now, the docs for the IEX API are your greatest resource. You can see from scrolling through here all of the different pieces of data you can retrieve. And if you scroll around within a particular data set, you can see how much it will cost you. As part of a basic plan, like the one I use, you'll get 5 million core messages per month. Anything more than that is billed at $1 per million. So if we look at an endpoint like analyst recommendations here, you'll see that it costs 1,000 messages every time we call it. That seems cheap, but it can quite quickly add up if you're calling this a few times a day. For example, my analyst score 
takes right about 5 million core messages to run. And that's why I only run it once a month. There's definitely ways I could cut back on my usage, but I'll explore them as part of future videos in this series with you. The IEX API also lets us query technical indicators, and we can delve into corporate actions such as stock splits, bonuses, dividends, and more. If you're interested in upcoming IPOs, that's there for you too. As is a streaming news endpoint, so you can keep up to date on your portfolio. For those looking for more than stocks, IEX also supports cryptocurrencies, Forex, options data, commodities, and even treasury data. A variety of economic data can also be obtained should you want to include any of them in your model ideas. And finally, way down at the bottom of the page, hidden away under premium data is some really expensive stuff like this value engine research report or stock twits social sentiment scores. As you can see, this API offers a lot. Whatever you can think of, it's likely you can build it and test it out with the IEX API. I've personally built uh, quality scoring systems, I've built value scoring systems, and an analyst scoring system that you can see in one of my previous videos. It's a fun way to spend a rainy day. Over the coming videos in this series, we'll explore more of these topics. A premium IEX account will be required, but I assure you that it is worth it. I do have a referral link below in the description if you'd like to go that route, but if not, no worries. If you had any issues getting set up with Python, drop a comment below and I'll try my best to help you out. Likewise, if there's any other questions or things you'd like me to cover in the future, please leave a comment. To ensure that you get notified of upcoming videos in this series, please subscribe to the channel. Now, I do post about other finance and personal finance topics, so there is some other great content in the mix there too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.